think there should be books that are banned for in school? Kid, books like that, yes, that are teaching children wrong moral values. Um, what about a book that says slavery is okay? I have never seen a book that said slavery was okay. What, what about a book that where somebody sells their daughter into slavery for no. 200 foreskins? Would that be okay? No, 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 nothing on, no. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here, and in a video by The Good Liars, Jason Selvig interviews a Trump supporter who advocates for teaching the Bible in schools, but hilariously reveals her lack of knowledge with its content. Like I said, good moral values is what needs to be taught. It needs to be brought back in. Like books like the Bible? The Bible would be an awesome one. You think the Bible should be taught in school? I do. It's history. It should be taught as a history class because that's what it is. It is a history book. The, the two things I just said were from the Bible. Slavery? Yeah, you're right. And the selling the daughter for foreskin. That's true. That's true. You got a point there. Selvig humorously exposes her ignorance by referencing obscure Bible passages like 1 Samuel, where King Saul asked David for a hundred Philistine foreskins, and a verse from Exodus discussing selling a daughter into slavery. David tried to make a good impression on the king and brought back 200 foreskins instead. The supporter, initially confident, became confused and divisive, highlighting the hypocrisy and cherry-picking often seen in such evangelical arguments. This exchange ties into broader concerns about Christian nationalism, exemplified by Louisiana's recent law requiring public schools to display the Ten Commandments. Critics of a new law say that in Louisiana schools, the line between church and state is getting blurred. The Republican governor just signed a law making Louisiana the first state in the country to require the Ten Commandments be posted in every public school classroom, from kindergarten through state-funded universities. Critics argue that such laws blur the lines between church and state, leading to potential legal challenges and societal divisions. Yeah, and I don't know which one they're going to put up. There's ten different versions of the Ten Commandments, and our schools are so underfunded that I'm not sure half the kids even know how to read them. I don't think that it's bad to have something that says honor your father and mother uh, so that you will live a long life. That is the first commandment that has a promise attached to it. I don't think that it's bad to teach children that adultery is something that you should not do. And uh, also listed in the Ten Commandments, thou shall not steal. And maybe the left and uh, some of these politicians are having a meltdown over having that right there listed in our classrooms, thou shalt not steal, is because government hates competition. Extremists in Congress like Lauren Boebert and Marge the Trainwreck Green promote a version of Christianity far removed from its teachings, reflecting an undereducated, biased perspective. Their actions contribute to a divisive political climate where religion is wielded as a tool for exclusion rather than inclusion. On her show, The Readout, Joy Reid expressed strong criticisms against Louisiana's new law, calling it a significant step backwards compared to the progress made under Democratic leadership. This bill mandates the display of the Ten Commandments in every classroom in public, elementary, secondary, and post-education schools in the state of Louisiana. Because if you want to respect the rule of law, you got to start from the original lawgiver which was Moses. That's right. Amen. Even before he signed that law, making Louisiana the first and only state so far, requiring the Ten Commandments be displayed in every classroom, Landry was touting it as a right-wing culture war victory. He told a Republican fundraiser in Tennessee he can't wait to be sued over the law. She highlighted the constitutional issues it presents, emphasizing the need for a clear separation between church and state. The way that they're arguing that, you know, this is somehow a foundational element in the Constitution, there is nothing about the Ten Commandments or the Christian Bible in the Constitution, right? Have I just read it wrong? No, you've read it right. The Constitution promises religious freedom. It promises no religious test for anyone in public office. It doesn't reference God. Our Constitution is an American original. Similar laws have been struck down by the Supreme Court in the past for violating this principle, aligning with the idea that public schools should be inclusive and secular. This long-standing legal precedent underscores the importance of maintaining neutrality in public education to protect the diverse beliefs of all students. Reed also pointed out that mandating the Ten Commandments in classrooms could be seen as religious coercion, pressuring students to conform to a specific 
specific religious viewpoint. This imposition undermines the neutrality that public schools are supposed to uphold. Reed also criticized the double standard of those who support the Ten Commandments law while opposing the display of pride flags, calling it hypocritical. According to Reed, it is ironic to deem one form of expression acceptable while condemning another. This selective enforcement of religious and moral standards reveals a double standard. Reed argued that the funds and efforts spent defending this law in court could be better used to address pressing educational needs in Louisiana, such as improving reading proficiency and overall academic performance. Louisiana is competing with West Virginia for the lowest rankings in educational achievement, and they would benefit more from investments in teacher training, classroom resources, and student support services. Reed also raised concerns about diversity and inclusion, questioning whether similar efforts would be made to display religious texts from other faiths, such as the Quran or Buddhist scriptures. By privileging the Ten Commandments, the law could marginalize non-Christian students, thereby undermining the inclusion ethos that public schools are supposed to embody. In summary, Reed believes the new law is problematic because it mixes religion with public education, which should be a neutral space for all students. Reed's argument suggests that Louisiana's new law is a backward step, far from the progress made under Democratic leadership. Her critique, along with the humorous clip by Jason Selvig, underscores the shallow hypocrisy used in deciding which religious texts are suitable for schools. By focusing on controversial and divisive issues, Louisiana risks diverting attention from the real educational needs of its students. This numb skull that the good liar started off with is the result of a bad education. She's a prime example of the typical Trump supporter who thinks that they are experts in topics that they know nothing about. And Louisiana wants more of them. It's absolutely pathetic. And that is an absolute fact. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.